Now that we've got the two techniques down as far as learning addresses, whether we do it with static entries or sticky entries or dynamically learned entries, in port security, let's see if we can mix the two because you could get a scenario where you have someone who says, okay, the device in my office right now is the one I usually use, but this weekend, starting tomorrow, I'm going to bring in a laptop and I need to be able to connect with that too. So maybe you want to configure one static address and leave room, if you will, for one dynamically learned one. Let's see if we can do that and what the config would look like. And I have taken the commands off from the previous video. So you know the first thing we've got to put here. And we've looked at just about all these options. We're going to leave aging alone. But MAC address maximum and violation, that's what we're really interested in. We've looked at two of the three. And here's the maximum option. And as you can see, you cannot set this to zero. I mentioned two videos ago that it wouldn't make much sense to. And it wouldn't, and apparently Cisco agrees because you cannot, that would really disable the number of MAC addresses command. If you're going to do that, you might as well shut the port down. So we're going to go ahead and set this to two. And then we're going to configure one static entry. Let's put it all A's. And there we go. So an unusual looking config. We've configured it for two addresses overall. And we've put one static entry in as far as the MAC address goes. So let's go over to router 2, generate a little traffic, and see what happens. And it looks like they're going right through. So let's go back to the switch and see what's going on. We've got look at the interface first. And, you know, this is helpful, but we pretty much knew this when we saw the pings go through. So we're up and up. We're all connected there. Everything's fine. But we want some port security specific information. We want to know that that address on router 2 was dynamically learned, was stickily learned, if you will. So let's run show port security by itself. And let's see, we've got some different values here this time. Two secure addresses, that makes sense. Two current addresses, so it does look like it learned that one address uh, stickily. There have been no security violations, and there's the security action, which we know that's not necessarily what's going on on the port. Total addresses in system, excluding one MAC per port, is one. So that's a fancy way of saying we have two. So let's go ahead and run. F is dropping there. FASTO2. And it's looking pretty good. We're enabled on that port. Secure and up. Two maximum MAC addresses. Two total MAC addresses. One configured one. That was the all A's address. And then one sticky one. And we can tell by the process of elimination that this has to be the stickily learned MAC address because that's the one that's in the table. So you can see here there is a way to combine the two. It's not tricky either. All you have to do with the maximum command is leave room for that dynamically learned one, and then you put your static ones in. So if you have, if you set that maximum MAC address to five, and you've only configured one static address, the next four addresses it learns dynamically are going to be sticky. That, that's a lot of devices. I don't know that I would go that far, but I did want to show you that it could indeed be done. So port security, short and sweet. You know, we've looked at three different scenarios there, three common scenarios that will show you exactly what's going on. And again, just make sure you're comfortable with the violation modes and all the defaults. You definitely want to have those down. In the very next video, I'm going to give you a taste of spanning tree protocol. STP is mostly and almost entirely on the ICND2 exam. So if you're taking the two exam path, then you know, you'll watch that one as well at that time. But we're going to introduce you to STP, show you what's going on with it, and then in your ICND2 studies, you'll really be hitting it hard with plenty of details, believe me. So I'll see you in the next video, and we'll take care of that business.